I thought I'd start the presentation by just talking about some of the momentum. And if you did a quick Google search on DevOps momentum or the adoption rates at DevOps, I mean, you're going to find no shortage of, of information out there showing year over year increasing adoption rates. Uh, I mean, you see it in most enterprises now, uh, at least starting or thinking about it. And a lot of the elite shops that have been doing it for a while are now taking it from where they had it started into other areas of, of their organizations. One of the areas they're taking it is, uh, is going to be the network. And when you talk about DevOps uh, for networking, that's what we call, of course, NetOps. And we've seen already uh, an impact on, of DevOps on the network. I mean, if you think about just uh, the amount of microservices taking off and the, the rise of containers and Kubernetes, which has been awesome. And you take a, a single piece, what used to be a monolithic piece of code, and you break it into a million uh, containers and they're distributed. You mix in their DevOps practices so those services, those applications get developed faster. They can pop up and be deployed in more places more quickly. What the impact is on the network is it needs to move faster. It needs to be able to adapt to those DevOps environments. Now, if you think about, if you're a networking guy like me and you think about what faster meant or means, uh, you usually equate it to automation. Faster in a networking world typically means automation. But what we learned at Nokia is that NetOps is more than just network automation. I mean, certainly automation underpins everything there is about NetOps. Uh, that's still extremely important. But when we talk to like the big hyperscalers in, in the Bay Area and we talk to the elite DevOps shops, what we find is that automation is just one problem to solve for as a barrier. And there's other things that are equally as important to really enable your NetOps journey. So let's, let's dive into what some of these problems are. And uh, because NetOps is, uh, uses DevOps practices and methodologies, right? It, NetOps picks up a lot of the benefits, namely like moving faster and more efficiently, but it also picks up some of the challenges we see in the DevOps. And, and this is a picture that's of some well-known challenges we see. In fact, Kerry in the previous uh, presentation had a, two bulls colliding. It, it's two opposing forces uh, working together uh, that need to work together. And this is a similar picture, right? So on the one of those opposing forces is the DevOps team, and that's the team that wants to move quickly. That's the team that wants to go faster. The other opposing force is what traditional operations looks like. And uh, that's the group that likes to keep things static. And both of these sides come into the middle and they're hitting that ops guy, as Carrie pointed out, and I totally agree with. In the DevOps model, uh, that ops guy, he's really focusing on the host and the compute side of things. And up to this point, that's, that's most of DevOps. Uh, that same problem, though, applies to NetOps except you expand from the host and the server side of the equation to the entire network. And as most people in networking know, the network is uh, its own special beast, I'll say. And if you think about what's happening to the, this, this, this dynamic, what's happening to the ops guy is he's actually getting stretched in two different directions. So one direction is to be agile. That's reactive dynamic and fast and the other direction is to be to keep that availability and my ops guy in the middle here he's conveniently looking at that availability side because that's what we know how to do today we're very good as operations network operations people in building five nines we're very good at building reliable high performance networks secure networks what's been harder is that arrow that's coming out of the backside of the guy's head to be agile. And agile means change. And if you're embracing your digital transformation or you want to get in the NetOps, DevOps game, not only do you have to embrace change, you need like rapid change. And change is something the network really isn't known for. I mean, if you think about it, we put in a lot of things to purposely avoid change, like change management's real change maintenance windows are real. Uh, well, there's some pride in never upgrading your network because you don't need to, right? So agility and change is not the, the network strong suit. But if you pause for one minute and you ask yourself why that is, 
I mean, why is change and being agile difficult? And I'm not saying it's not impossible, but it's it's harder. And is it? It's not because of technology. I think because the protocols exist, SDN systems exist, data abstraction models exist today. So from a technology side, I think we're mostly there. And the feedback we got from uh, our elite DevOps shops is that it wasn't. It's not automation per se. It's these other things that are barriers. And I'm going to class. I'm going to talk about those barriers on this slide. And I'm going to group them into uh, a couple of buckets here. So. The first bucket of barriers is basically just getting started. So if you're in the boat where you haven't dove, dove into DevOps or NetOps yet, I mean, this is, a, this is a big area. And to be honest with you, I'm not going to spend time covering this. Uh, it's just I don't, don't have enough time. But you, definitely you'll need leadership buy-in because uh, you're going to have organizational changes, cultural changes, skill deficits. What I would say is that... Uh, you should understand your problems first, what exactly you're trying to solve and why, and, and approach it from that perspective. And normally the, 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 the scales tip to where it does make sense. I'm gonna focus on bucket number two here though. And this is the feedback we've gotten from our uh, elite DevOps shops. So on, on what the barriers are. And the first one is talking about the need for customization. So the, the bullet reads need to address bespoke network requirements. This is really talking about customization. And what we found is that every NetOps environment needs to automate or interwork with different things, whether it's different tooling or different networking parameters or different areas. As Kerry was saying, the edge is changing all over the place. There's something in that environment or that application that's bespoke to that, to that NetOps solution. And so what you need is a lot of customization from your NetOps environment to work for those. And typically why this is hard is because vendors don't always do this great. And as a vendor, I think I can say this, but I, we like to package you up into a feature bucket and we give you that feature bucket and we say, try to make this work. And when it doesn't work, you need a feature we happily oblige you, put you on the feature train and get you the feature. Now that's after some amount of time. And I think that time is important to realize because I think that's part of the reasons making NetOps uh, challenging is you can't, we're, we're getting in your way. We're not moving as fast as you want to. Their open source is another interesting thing to consider. I mean, this does give you that transparency, that ability to customize. Uh, and we see lots of people, especially the hyperscalers looking at this way. I would say both of these options have their trade-offs. I mean, for open source, it opens up a whole other uh, kettle of fish on how you support it. But customization and, do, and solving those customization, those features in a timely manner is one requirement. The second one is it just needs to be simpler. And Kerry talked about this in the last presentation. Uh, we need to make net networking simpler. And to some of us, it is simple, but to many of us, it's not. Uh, the hyperscalers, quite famously uh, have, you know, made their networks leaner. So that's just, that's a form of simplicity or they reduce the number of protocols to make the systems more lightweight. That's part of this. The reuse of the tools. So if you're in a DevOps shop and you have a bunch of tools, you need to be able to reuse those to make it simpler. One of the ones that surprised me though, that we have feedback we got was just on something as simple as documentation. Uh, in an environment where you want to move fast, you want your information fast, and having the documentation available on what to do without having to call your vendor was surprisingly lacking and surprisingly super important uh, to enabling NetOps. Part of the reason I think that is is because of number three here, and that's just the industry has so many different parameters on how things scale. The state of the technology is some features are for some parts of the box and not for others, like an automation feature works for these interfaces, but not for these ones. All that stuff needs to be documented. All that stuff needs to be made clear to your NetOps team very easily. So what I think the goals are here is that you have to start thinking, what these folks want to do is start thinking as the network is almost like a platform. It's a common base that solves their challenges for all of their organizations. So a single platform, and you think of it as enabling self-service in how you interact with the box, how you get help from the box in the system. Everything moves to API driven. Everything is customizable. 
and above all, and it's just easy to use. So how do they come to these conclusions? So if, if these are the things that they're calling out to us as are important barriers to overcome, why is that? And we can look at that and to understand it, we have to understand the role of technology today. So what this graph shows you is a move of data center or networking operating systems as, they, as we've marched through time. I've got 1995 here, but these are all rough timelines. I'm just trying to show a move from a connectivity era, which is on the far left. And that's, you know, very static, simple layer two networks, really no automation happening down in the connectivity area, especially in the beginning. And moving to the automation era, which is includes right now. And at 2020, 2021, I think I would say automate, we're in the automation era. There's a lot of solutions on the market on how to automate your network under any, almost any definition of automation. But the important thing to understand here is this orange curve, this orange line, which represents the OSs and the technology that went into these OSs and how we got to the automation era. Because what happened was from the beginning in the connectivity area, we had the base infrastructure of an OS. And to reach automation, we added on incrementally features. So we'd add on NetConf, we add on telemetry, we'd add on model-driven interfaces, we disaggregated the box. But the fundamental pieces of that architecture stayed the same. So we bolted on functionality to get to the automation era. And because it was, was not designed to do these things from the beginning, there are trade-offs. And these trade-offs is exactly what our DevOps elite uh, partners were telling us were missing. So what was missing is this NetOps era really is, needs to go on a higher trajectory. And to get on that higher trajectory, you actually need a, a rewrite and a rethink of the system. So it's not a complete rethink. We take the pieces of automation that are already there and we build on top of that. But what we're building on top of that is the customization piece we're missing, the scale and performance piece that they're missing, and we and the ability to make things easy by getting rid of some of those trade-offs we saw from inheriting some of the, the features over the last you know decade or so. So I can be a little bit more prescriptive on exactly what I mean here. And I can show you on this slide some more tangible, uh, discrete things that they were looking for. And I can, I can walk through this build slide with you. But on the left-hand side, you see a, a network operating system and hardware. Base, table stakes now is you need to have an operating system that works with almost any hardware. So some abstraction level southbound of hardware is table stakes. Where the real work came is above there. And where above there, what I'm showing is the applications. So each one of these circles you can think of as a protocol. It could be other things in a system, but every one of these uh, green circles is a protocol. And the protocols have to be discrete systems because what you want from a customization point of view is to be able to say, uh, of these available ones, I only want these four. So you need to be able to load only the applications you need. This is, this is the lean aspect of, uh, of the requirements, getting rid of, of some of the bloat on the system. But the second thing you need to be able to do is once those applications are there is, is understand what happens in failure situations. You need to be able to manage the life cycle of these things. And this is something that's new as far as customization goes. Uh, it's not really easy for a vendor to know what the important protocols are in your network. You have, could have a protocol that I don't think is important, but you think is critical. So if it fails, fail the whole box. Or you would maybe want the option to take that protocol and restart it or restarted after some amount of time. The options on what to do in these failure situations for what protocol should be completely yours and defined for your own environment, for your own applications, whatever NetOps goals you're trying to achieve. The other thing that, we, that the system needs to do is add functionality when you need it. There's two parts here, add functionality and when you need it. So in this particular case, you need to replace one of uh, these green, green bubbles with your own application. So you might take a BGP stack from us, put on a, or somebody else, you need to put on a Go BGP stack because that's what you want. That should be possible because you have good reasons to do that. 
If you want to add your other applications, like these two uh, yellow ones on the right, you should be able to do that. This is the ability to embracing kind of that open source model where if you need something, a feature, you want to be able to code and you can code it yourself, we'll get out of your way, put it onto the box and, and deploy it yourself and, and achieve your goals. And the key thing, and surprisingly simple, but missing in the industry is to be able to do this, add all these changes, add your own applications when you want to, how you want to, but have it managed through a single interface. So if this is a CLI, whether it's our application or vendor application or an open source application, if it's sitting there as an application, you should see everything in the CLI. You should be able to consume everything about that. You should be able to get, read, uh, set, read, stream telemetry from everything and do everything through a single interface. In our case, uh, that's GNMI gRPC as a, as a great protocol that can do everything we're talking about here. The other half of this to turn this into a platform. And so what you've done basically is you've turned your network operating system into a platform. You've made it customizable, you've made it extensible, you've made it easy to read, uh, easy to use. So when you deploy a, uh, an SDN system over top of it, whether that's a vendor system or whether that's uh, open source systems, whether that's in day zero designing it or day one deploying it or day two plus monitoring it and analyzing your network, and all of these functions, whatever you need in your NetOps environment, can now use that single interface and consume the, the, op, the network, the fabric as a platform. And this, this idea of making the, the, the network into a platform is exactly this, providing this, the network your own way when you want it and making everything easy to consume. So my last slide here is uh, just a wrap up and uh, I want to talk about how, in summary, the NetOps era we think is here today. Uh, we think DevOps has shown amazing progress uh, and NetOps is, is the next barrier. Uh, for you to achieve NetOps, the lessons learned we ha we've had, we found is that automation is key and that underpins everything, but you need to be thinking about scale, customization and extensibility of your platform and ease of use as uh, primary goals.